Welcome to the NFT podcast, Enrico. And how are you doing? Oh, man, I'm feeling amazing. Feeling blessed, man. I'm excited to talk about NFTs and crypto with you. Yeah, man, amazing. So I'm very really glad to start with, I am, we are in my show in the NFT podcast, but I'm very really glad to start with your show, with your MVP show. What is, man, what, what is happening to these NFT shows? Anywhere, a lot of people are jumping in this. Yeah, you know, MVP stands for motherfucking valuable perspectives, right? So for me, it's all about sharing uh, people's valuable perspectives with the world. I want to show people what blockchain is, what crypto is and investing. You know, my whole goal is to help people create generational wealth with the show. Amazing. Amazing. I like, so you, 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 you don't just want to talk about like NFTs, maybe you start more with like crypto because I saw that you are like a, a crypto pop artist, like. Yeah, exactly. You know, I, I want people to understand what blockchain is, what crypto is. Um, but this is, you know, this is just the very beginning, you know, there's, there's entrepreneurship, there's so many ways that one could potentially get into this industry. You know, you could be an artist, a graphic designer, a coder. Um, you could just be trading, day trading. So I think there's there's so many different arenas that this touches that I want people to kind of see what the opportunities are. Absolutely, man. And how you started your journey with crypto? Yeah, you know, I was in the middle of COVID and because everything was locked down, I was living with my family, you know, my fiance, had my five-year-old daughter and, and things were just really tight. I also DJ and, and I have a DJ company. And so when the lockdown started, I wasn't able to go out and DJ. And there was just a big part of me that was missing, right? This creative part of me that is all about like expressing myself and getting that instant feedback from the crowd by dancing and stuff like that. So I was really missing that. And I started just one, like asking myself, like, how can I get that need met, right? My need to express myself. So I've had this idea to create this artwork, a very specific artwork, which you can actually see behind me. I had this idea for maybe the last six years that I wanted to create pictures of my favorite artists, hip hop artists, and then put Serasi crystals on their chains, right? So Finally, during COVID, I ordered some canvases, I did the painting, um, and it took me a while, but like I finally got enough courage to share on my Facebook. And, you know, I started selling my pieces, I started creating more, selling, selling out basically, and I started selling thousands of dollars worth of these pieces. And so I started asking myself, like, how can I protect my collector's value? because this isn't, I'm not using acrylic paint or oil, I'm using digital, right? I use my, my iPad and the, the Apple Pencil to create it. So I'm thinking to myself, like what happens if someone finds my digital pieces and they just print off a bunch and they're doing the crystals? What happens to the value of my art, right? And the people collecting it. So randomly I was just searching, like, how do I, you know, like, digitally digitally store it and i literally was just like googling stuff and i found nfts just randomly and it was like what the fuck like this is exactly the solution to the problem i'm looking for so that was like late 2020 and in that moment i just basically i started reading as much as i could i was losing a ton of sleep you know learning about blockchain and ethereum and i decided to invest um, you know, a decent amount of money into Ethereum. I saw what it was and I said, you know, I'm going to put money in. And, um, you know, as the months progressed, I just saw that, that money, um, you know, returning crazy returns on, on my investment. Um, so I started just diving even deeper and deeper into what NFTs are. And, um, I mean, I started buying digital real estate, you know, I have some crypto voxels, I have some sandbox spots. Um, and just diving into, you know, what are NFTs? I started selling NFTs. Um, so since then, I've just been all in, you know, I, I'm total, uh, total uh, blockchain crypto DJ, <laughs> you know, just going in and, and trying to learn as much as I can, to be honest. Oh man, great, absolutely. Like everything is changing now, everything. I, I see that like you can have huge rewards from them. And like in general, like because you mentioned that like NFTs solved your problem. I'd love you to be more like more specific with this, like because you 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 work in art, you work in music, you you do you you work as in as an investor. So like how NFTs 
changed like the way you were making money like and the way they were protecting your intellectual property yeah so you know when i realized that nfts could allow me to create a unique digital asset you know that really just changed the paradigm right because before that what i was doing is i was printing out my pieces i was applying the crystals so this actually allowed me to create a digital piece that i could actually sell and and has value just because um of the scarcity right so that was kind of the the beginning of how nfts really started to help me in my art and then when i was able to buy you know my first property in digital real estate and to put up my nfts in my crypto voxel space you know i started selling my art because you know people were able to discover me through this gallery that i curated um in the metaverse so oh. you know it, it's kind of like giving access to more people uh, like a marketing technique right it's like i could put something on open c or you know get into one of the other platforms um but by putting my art up in crypto voxels it actually gets more accessibility to my art more people are seeing my art and you know how it is right with any product the more accessibility you have the more abilities you have to potentially make sales absolutely man i'm like you mentioned like more people more people can see my work of course more people can buy my work and like so that does uh, bringing your heart into nfts also open your to you to you to more people but also like changing your target i don't know if you have, if you had a specific target before with just physical works and now you you see that you've got different targets for example for age for geographics definitely man you hit it the nail on the head right because before i'm limited to uh people who can come see my art in los angeles right or people who can see my art through social media i believe that uh you know this whole nft craze in the, in the metaverse the way i see it because i come from the digital marketing space it reminds me a lot of what happened in the early days of social media in the context that when instagram first got started people weren't going on Instagram to make money, right? People were going on to Instagram to express themselves, to show their photography, to show their artwork. Models were going on there. And it was really used as a, a portfolio platform, right? So I see the same thing is happening in the metaverse, right? You have the artists who are making crypto voxels what it is, right? And it's not, some people are coming in and they're speculating but the only reason why that speculation is even valuable just like instagram is because the artists are coming and filling the space with something that's valuable right if if all the photographers and all the models and artists never went to instagram and everybody wasn't saying hey go to my instagram.com then instagram wouldn't be that business platform it is today right so i, I see these things kind of merging but instead of me putting my content on instagram and not owning it right i can put my content into my space in the metaverse that i actually own and if i make sales i get direct benefit from that not instagram no other company that goes directly to me so in in some ways we're cutting out the middleman because people can get direct access to me without any other uh, person in the middle kind of trying to take their cut yeah yeah absolutely there is there are, there are of course similarities and uh, i am i'm sure that like people in the in the, in this space they're understanding it uh, against the skeptics that i still they're under understanding this technology but we are just at the beginning this is a sketch of what we're going to see but of course we're going to jump in the metaverse i we are seeing a bunch of of investment that are moving companies into the metaverse and uh, you mentioned crypto vocals crypto vocals and you showed my your collection into your museum that you build inside crypto voxels and of course i'm going to add it here in the description so that our audience are going to see it and like how how's it like hanging out in the crypto voxel what, what, what what's in oh. there what what's our uh, what's our like other projects and stuff that you have seen inside man i love crypto voxels one of my favorite things to do is just just randomly walk around crypto voxels and look at all the cool art you know look at how people are creating their space it's kind of like going into a new city right if you were to go to any city whether it's new york or paris in the very beginning of that city it was the architects right these are the first artists right it's like we think about these museums but all of this stuff happened after the roads were paved after the streets were were put down the sidewalks the the 
the uh, light lamps, right? The lamp posts, the buildings. So that's what's happening in, in crypto voxels. You can walk around and just the building is art, right? You got art inside of it, but just how the structure looks and the windows and the lighting, um, you know, it's so cool to just to be able to get inspiration to see what people are doing. And then on top of that, right, how many of us were playing Minecraft or, or you know, I have, I have children and my kids play Minecraft, right? And essentially crypto voxels is you build it exactly like you you build in Minecraft with these box files and these blocks. Um, so there's a couple of things, you know, I actually love to put on my Quest vir virtual reality headset and walk around. That's like the best way to experience it. Oh, you're sure. just looking at life-size art you know, so uh, there was a while where it was just like at night, I would just go browse around for hours and hours at, at a time just to see all the cool stuff. Um, but, you know, it's really just getting started. Ben and the whole team over at Crypto Voxels, you know, they update things on a weekly basis, you know, so there's there's wearables that are now available. Um, and there's all these different functions that that continue to get added almost on a daily basis. That's crazy, man. Absolutely. Like you said that you've got a VR and like I'm interested in buying my Oculus VR. Which one, which one do you suggest? Which, which one do you have? Because there are different of them. One from Facebook, one from uh, Google and there are others. Like which one do you have? Yeah, you know, I have the Quest myself. I have the the first Quest, but I've used the the Quest 2. It's definitely a little bit better than the first one. Um, but it's amazing. I think that I think that the Oculus has done an amazing job at creating something that's simple to use right out the box. You use it, you set it up, you kind of create your your whole little boundary and you're right in there. Um, you know, and I think we're we're really at the very very beginning of like integration into the crypto space right like you have to do it through a browser you're not really able to hook up your metamask yet so there's still a lot of limitations but i do know that the whole team over at crypto voxels is is working on the quest right now as we speak to to make it more integrated yeah yeah absolutely man like i think that there are already like raising some new jobs also and jobs opportunities in the metaverse for example like uh, the other time like a guest told me about like digital virtual real estate agents and that seems like crazy <laughs> because you know you've got a museum you've got your space in crypto voxel and like you can rent it you can sell it so for example this is one is there any other like job that you think that it is going to rise in this year in the next year into the metaverse in the nft space most definitely. So I don't know if you know, you've heard about Zed Run, right? But the digital racehorsing. And so, you know, that I think that's already creating jobs. I've been buying and selling and racing my digital racehorses. So you got people who are stable owners, right? People who are managing stables. Um, I think one of the main jobs that's emerging right now is, is the art curator, right? So what you could do is you could buy a property in the metaverse and crypto voxels, and then you could reach out to, let's say, 50 artists or 20 artists and say, hey, I have a space. I want to put your art in here, just like someone who has a regular art gallery. Um, and you could make a commission off of whatever's sold um, from that space. So I think that's happening. You got uh what are they called crypto crypto architects right so you got people who their whole job is just to create buildings right just like real architects where you come and you tell them you know i have a company i have a plan for this building these are the kind of the colorways that i want this is the aesthetic that i want and you got people who are charging thousands tens of thousands of dollars to build uh digital buildings that um you know people can walk in and then those buildings have value right let's say i'm building a gallery and I choose to hire someone that makes this really beautiful looking building, my art might have a better chance at selling now because I invested a little bit more into the building, right? And when you walk into a museum, it's not just like a, a brick building and shit. It's like you walk in and you're like, wow, like look at how this looks and it's inspiring. The art elevates because the building looks beautiful, right? So I think those are a couple jobs that I've seen off the top of my head that I'm like, it's already happening. People are already getting paid right now. That's crazy, man. Absolutely. Like, so imagine that like I am building my exhibition inside the metaverse. Like, so I, I had like an art curator, I had these people and 
because you said before that you, you came from digital marketing, so you know how to promote something on Facebook, you know how to promote something on Instagram, but like, how do you think that you can promote your project into the metaverse? So that's a great, a great question, right? So without going into social media, let's say, you know, I have a, a space in crypto voxels, right? So people are walking past your space, right? So let's just compare it to Manhattan. Right. If you buy a building in Manhattan, you know, what are you going to do? Are you going to put up a sign on the outside? Because people are walking past your building every single day. Um, so you, you want to think about how do you attract people into your building? Right. You could use you could build a statue. Right. You could put a big sign up. Um, so that that's one of the ways. Another way I think is the old fashioned word of mouth. Right. So why people into your space are you offering something in your space you know you could do something where you have these easter egg hunts right so if you go to your crypto voxel space and you're you're hitting these different links you could have them solve a problem or solve a puzzle and then you could literally airdrop them you know ethereum or maybe you have your own erc20 social token so you could do some type of interactive um gameplay where people are going to your space but because they've gone to your space you're able to give them some type of reward right and so uh -huh. you could do this thing where maybe on youtube you're like hey go to my crypto box space hit hit the button number two and you know fill out the form and i'm going to give a prize to someone who does that so you're kind of creating this this whole interactive um functionality with your with your space uh huh, man, that's very interesting. I never thought about this, and it also like coming to my mind because you said like word of mouth, and of course, crypto voxels it's easier like to move around this back than Manhattan because Manhattan is huge and like there are there are thousands of thousands of people. But like if you walk through crypto voxels, you just meet other people and you can interact with them. And maybe yeah. sometimes because maybe of course if you are in the street. You, you cannot stop like all the people that, that comes to you and say, hey, I've got an exhibition because you don't know what these people like. Maybe he's, he's, he's doing all other jobs and he doesn't care about the art, art and exhibition. But if you are in crypto voxels and like, this is how the crypto voxel works for the most. So I've got my NFTs, I exhibit them. And if you just find people in the street, of course they will be interested in your exhibition. You just talk with them and say, hey, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And it's interesting yeah. that you can like display your NFTs and like you can give away like NFTs if you come if you come to my to my place and that's something that like builds it's building upon itself. Okay, crazy. And like, uh, have you have you already yeah. done have you already done like an exhibition in crypto boxes or are you going to like create a I special have... event an exhibition? Yeah, so I had uh, my, one of my first exhibitions was called We Come From Chains. Um, and that was kind of my first build out, you know, that that uh, exhibition basically was half sold out. So it did pretty well for my first one, for my first drop. And I have one right now in another space that's basically, I think it's like seven or eight different artists that all came together. And I'm basically helping them, like all of them was their first NFTs that they've ever minted, right? So I kind of... And we're going to be doing events at that space and i'm having like live musicians do twitch twitch performances and live djs do uh live performances and that's another way you can market in your space right you can actually have events in your your crypto voxel space you could have live djs you could have panels and having people talk i've seen people um do clubhouse while they're simultaneously sending the link out to crypto voxels so you could be listening to everybody while you're walking around as avatars um so i think mm -hmm. there's there's definitely some like innovations that are happening to get people into your space and the cool thing kind of like that you're mentioning like if people are in crypto voxels they're already for the most part crypto natives right yeah. so you could potentially expect them to have a metamask wallet you could even potentially expect them to have some Ethereum, you know, in their wallet. So not only are they just random people walking on the street, these are these are people who most likely will be potential buyers. They might not like your art, but if they did like it, they actually could pull out their MetaMask and like it's like pulling out a, a credit card right in the metaverse. It's like if you got your MetaMask, then you can actually make something happen. Some people are just dropping in because maybe somebody sent them a link 
and it's their first time. But I would probably say at least 60, 70 percent of the people are crypto natives who are who are in the space. Absolutely. So they are already there. It's easy to convert them. And of course, as you're saying, it's easy to build an exhibition or everything because you don't have to pay for like transportation. You just pay once to build like your place. You don't have like to bring artists, to bring stuff, to bring people. It's a way more easier. Of course, yeah, like you, you yes. cannot touch, you cannot really meet people, but I think that we are moving in that world in which it's going to feel way and way more normal to us to stay inside there, especially for people that like spend a lot of time like you, that you, you say that you hang out totally like there. <laughs> um, yeah. Exactly. One, yeah. One, point, one point on that too, it's like, so as, as things get a little bit more um, real, you, you want to look at like crypto voxels and anybody who's thinking about coming into the NF NFT space as an investor, but also as an entrepreneur or creative, you want to remember that this transcends time and space, right? So if I put up my crypto voxel space and it's in LA, right? When, when I invite people, it's most likely going to be during the day, right? It's going to be like, all right, maybe noon to 10 o'clock at night, maybe we do it late, but there's, there's going to be a specific time that you can come in and you can see it right now. If I do it in crypto voxels, you can come in anytime, yeah. right? Any time of the day. And it's going to be exactly the same. Yeah. I don't have to pay for a staff to watch the art to you. So nobody steals it. Right. So there's all these different economical, um, kind of yeah. like frameworks that make it so so different than we're used to because it literally transcends time and space at any time someone comes they're getting the same experience as someone who came maybe 12 hours later or 12 hours before and that concept to me is is very unique when it comes to business absolutely man it's like it's never die, never goes to sleep. And it also makes me think about like the dynamics of how stock markets and crypto markets work because crypto markets is 24 hour open, seven to seven, seven on Christmas and on Easter every day. But like the stock market closes. So our market has yeah. gone like hours. And that's, I think they get, we've got more time to do, to build stuff upon the blockchain. So it will be, of mm -hmm. course, more rewarding in that sense. Yeah, man. Yep. And so, because we are talking about like this digital world and this real world. And for example, about like, if we build like more and more this virtual world that are cheaper to create, faster to create, they've got more business opportunities. How do you think in terms of cost that is going to impact the real world? For example, real estate is a market that has got, if you bought a house, it tends to increase you know, over time, especially if like you know it. But if like we start building and buy, buying a lot of houses in digital world, do you think that is going to impact to the real world in the sense that we are, we are going to arrive at a certain time in which, hey, but why, why do I need like to build a museum in, uh, in um, like uh, real world that is going to cost me a lot of money, a lot of time to build it. And so do you think that like the price of real estate is going to decrease? And do you think, do you think about our exam examples that like after a well-developed like virtual world, it is going to impact a lot on the cost and on the benefits of the real world? Ooh, that's such a good question and so deep. So I'm going to take it uh, kind of side and we're going to bring it back. So. Yeah. I think that real estate is going to, the price of real estate is going to continue to, to come down. I think that the metaverse has, has something to do with this, but I think crypto has a lot more to do with this right now, right? I believe that the reason why the cost of homes and places around the world are, have gotten to astronomical levels in LA and New York, I believe is because you have a lot of wealthy people who are using homes as a store of value. Right. You have people in China, investors in China, all over the UK, all over America that are buying these homes. If you go to L.A., you'll see a lot of multi-million dollar homes that nobody lives in. Right. And they're using this as a store of value. But in the last 10 years, there's been a new store of value that's been invented. Right. It's called Bitcoin. Right. Ethereum. Um, so so I think that. If you look at like people who have been investing in homes as store of value and they see that there's a better store of value. 
I see those people wanting to pull that money out of the homes. And so that can kind of maybe make the home market get back to a place of like where it should be. People should be buying homes for a place to live. So I think that there's an adjustment that's going to happen. But I also believe that, you know, things aren't going to just go to the digital world. I think that you have scarcity in the real world, right? So a beachfront property in LA is still going to be scarce 100 years from now, right? Property in New York is still going to be scarce 100 years from now. Now, the value of that property in New York might be shifted because now you don't need to be in Wall Street to trade to trade on, on the stock market. Or maybe Wall Street isn't even the number one financial institution anymore, right? So I think that as our society starts to shift in the, in the way that we do business, right? I think that COVID changed our office situation, right? <clears throat> I think that we're going to be moving from a place where it's normal to go into the office to maybe it's an option to go into the to office, right? And I think that things like Oculus, uh, VR, augmented reality, it's really gonna allow us to do more. Like we're doing this interview via Zoom. And I think for the people watching it, there isn't much that's missing between me and you being in the same room, right? We're able to communicate, we're able to express our ideas. I can see you, the audience can see both of us. So I think that as technology continues to evolve, we're all going to be able to, again, transcend time and space, right? And so as we transcend time and space, it makes us uh, it makes us able to do more in the real world. So I think that the real world just gets better because of all these emerging technologies. I think that we're going to be at the very beginning of this huge explosion of new economies, new jobs, new opportunities, and then that gives people more money to bring back into the real world to build homes. You got three D printing that's coming that's going to drive the price of homes down. And then the last thing I'll add that I think is gonna really drive down the cost of homes is transportation, right? You have things like uh, you know, Tesla and Uber and uh, driverless cars, and then you know, potentially these maglev trains, right? Like high speed trains. So people could start living more in the middle of the country and and you know, going to the cities. Maybe it only takes you 30 minutes, you know, to go from like uh, a really isolated place that before was super inland to get to the city, right? And so people from the suburbs have been driving since the 60s and 70s. So I think as technology allows us to go a little bit further out from these urban metropolitan areas, um, you know, the price of homes can go down significantly, you know? So that's, that's kind of my prediction of the future. Who knows what's going to happen? That's a huge macro prediction, yeah, man. You 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 bring you bring in a lot of different like topics together, and uh, I, it seems like that you say, of course, it's going to be better. But when you say better, like I thought about equality and inequality, so it seems like that in this, I, like I've got an answer for one of my questions that I, I asked since I started this podcast. Is like, will NFTs will help us to reduce inequality? Mm. Seems, it's yeah. such a good question, you know, and I think um, when you ask that question, you start you start thinking like, where is inequality right now, right? Where does inequality live? And then how can crypto and blockchain yeah. help those places where it lives, right? And I think that, um, you know, people's access to capital has been limited because of race, because of geography, right? People's access to good jobs, right, have been limited. And so technology is already changing that. And I think blockchain speeds that up significantly. So I think that, um, you know, even when it comes to racism, it, how, how do you, how are you racist when things are happening through the blockchain, right? Someone, someone might be an avatar that's a woman and, and really it's a man, right? Or it's a man and really it's a woman like we saw in Ready Player Bro, One. Bro, that's so, so I cool. I never thought about it. You you, you are yep. you are like solving the racism problem in, in, thanks to like virtual avatars because I don't know who, who you, who you really are. Yeah, it's like we don't even know who you're dealing with. Like when I first bought my digital horses, right? I went into the, the marketplace and I mean, it was a lot of fun. I'm sitting here trying to buy it. And I sat there and thought like, okay, you know, I'm a light-skinned black dude. I'm a hip-hop dude. If I went into some like 
traditional horse stable and I wanted to go buy horses, right? It's not that I couldn't and my money wouldn't be accepted, but I would definitely feel a certain way. You know, maybe there are some racist people in the room, in the building, and it just would have been a different experience for me, right? So I think that this whole kind of like, we don't know who each other are unless we like stand up. If I stand up and say, yo, this is who I am, this is my address, then people could be like, all right, a black man owns these horses. Um, but if I'm just my address, I'm just my wallet, you know, race doesn't even matter in the metaverse. So, yeah. so I think we're going to really start to uh, race and gender, right? We're going to start to kind of move past some of these concepts, at least when it comes to the, the economies of it, right? Because racism in a lot of ways has a lot to do with capitalism, right? And slavery and enslaving people and Jim Crow and, you know, not letting certain people get jobs, not letting women get jobs, right? So there's been this limitation um, based on like, you know, societal oppression of black people, people of color and women. And I think that we're really stepping into a place that we've never seen before, right? We don't know what this looks like to be able to do business and kind of like this hidden layer, but I think it is going to address a lot of, um, you know, societal issues that we've been having. Wow. Absolutely. And like, I don't know why, but like more and more we are talking about this virtual world that, of course, is so cool. There are a lot of opportunities, but I'll, in, in, with all this enthusiasm, there is something that is starting maybe not to scare me, but then I'm starting to think and like, are we really are going to spend a lot of time in this virtual world and that means that we are going to spend a lot of time alone in our houses or maybe do you think that are we are going like to build like today we've got pubs in which we meet and like we drink but tomorrow are we going to see like i don't know more digital pubs but in the real world digital places no no sorry digital places real places but in which hold together, we are going like to connect and live together in this virtual world. Because of course, when you, and that's, a prob that's one of the problems of the social media in the sense that you build a digital identity, you've got millions of followers, you seems like, uh, oh, he's cool, but then in real life, you are not that person. So right. what do you think about that? Because of course, if I've got a lot of NFTs, if I've got a lot of digital assets in my virtual world, but then I cannot prove in any way in this real world that I've got them. I cannot directly spend them. Of course, I can spend the information that I learned from them. I can spend the network that uh, I learned, that I, I heard being the metaverse. I can spend the money that I had from crypto that I made in the metaverse. But here we are talking more, more about a status. So what do you think about this? What, what, what do you envision in like in a way, in a good, in a bad way? So, so what I kind of hear you uh, talking about is like this form of escapism, right? So like the metaverse creating this kind of like escapism from the real world and, and how do we justify, you know, time people are spending in the metaverse to the world. Um, but I think that this problem has actually been happening for hundreds and maybe yeah, hundreds of years. Let's just like, let's start there, right? And escapism, you could go into like the invention of books, right? So there's people who have bookshelves and ton, thousands and thousands of books, right? And what they do is they take a book and they start, they escape into that book, right? They leave reality and while they're reading, they're gone, right? They're in that book. And so people and same thing with television, right? Remember all the kids watching TV all super close in the 80s? And it's like, and everyone's like, oh, you know, they're watching too much TV. And then the same thing happened with gaming, right? All oh, the kids are playing too many video games. They're, they're not going to do anything in the real world. So I think this problem of escapism has been happening for a long time. You can oh, even yeah. look at a game, right? A game's like chess, right? Uh, like the Queen's Gambit. I don't know if you saw that on Netflix. But you can escape into a game and leave the real world in so many different capacities. So I think that, yes, uh, virtual reality and the metaverse, it kind of gives us a very rich experience. Maybe people might want to leave the real world. But I think that it, it as books can make our real world better, right? You can escape into, a, for me, I escaped into a book 
And then I come back to the real world and I feel more empowered in the real world, right? I feel more energized. I feel more educated. I feel more connected. And so my hope is that that's what the metaverse can do. Yes, it will be an escape for the real world, but it doesn't have to be a negative thing, right? You can, you can escape into a book and come back and it's a net positive um, for you as an experience, or you could escape into a book and people are calling you like, bro, I've been trying to hit you up. Where have you been? You know, I can't get a hold of you. So all these things can be a negative or a positive um, for bringing it back in the real world. But I think it's it's up to us to make that determination. I don't think by just by nature, it's either good or bad. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. And then we, we, we can, of course, like here, the solution to like this sort of isolation problem. If you want to stay isolated in that world, I think that always the solution is like, uh, still be educated in this Ed and educate yourself on how to use it and not just how to use it because like it's, of course, like people in, in gaming like 20 years ago, they, they were educated like as gamers. They were good at using it. They were good at using video gaming already for connecting with people, for learning. For example, I, I learned this story thanks to Assassin's Creed. But education is one thing and the other is like... Uh, build a job upon it because I see a lot of people like uh, spending too much time on Instagram and TikTok thinking that they are really influencers but maybe okay they're influencers my baby from one year they just they, 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 they don't really earn they don't really build a career upon this but thanks to NFTs in which we are going to create uh, a new era of social media in which ownership means that uh, you can really build an economy upon your contents. If you educate yourself in learning from these virtual worlds and in learning how to make money from these virtual worlds, that's cool. Because of course, we are, anyway, you are going to, you, you, you need to, uh, to go to use like that currency that you earned in the real world. So that's like a connection and that's like a justified escape because, okay, l let me put my voir, I, I, I'm going to make some money and then like, let me pull off my voir and okay, I'm going to like wor work and live in this world. So exactly. And, and to that point, it's like, I mean, just look at how many people work at jobs that they fucking hate, right? So it's like, it, that's a form of escapism too, right? So it's like, as we're able to provide people opportunities where they can monetize, maybe they can even, it's like, well, you are escaping to your job, right? It's like, you're not thinking about your life or your health or all these things when you're just working and grinding for a nine to five, right? So I, I think that, this is a new opportunity, like you said, where so like something like gaming, right? Gaming is now we have this opportunity for earn to play. And I think, like I was saying before, in the 80s and 90s, everybody was like the news, the parents was like gaming is horrible. Gaming is bad. Gaming is bad for kids. Um, but now we're seeing that you can actually earn a living playing a game. So it's like, OK, so you mean to tell me that playing games is bad, but laying concrete and killing your back, your physical body, that's not bad, or laying, laying wood on the floor and killing your knees. And I'm not disrespecting anybody who does those jobs, but we have to think as a society is, is risking our body. <laughs> you know, the only body we have is that really worth money, right? And so we, there's so many jobs that are dangerous that people do. And the only reason they do them isn't because they enjoy the job. It's because they want to have some type of living and earn a, earn a living. So if we can give people a safer way to earn a living that is more healthy for their body and potentially their spirit, I think we're entering a golden age of opportunity. Yeah, yeah, that's safer. That, absolutely, it's safer. Okay, man, let's, you talk about jobs and let's move away for a second, let's like talk about your jobs, your 2021 and 2022 jobs. So what are your projects? What are you going to see? What are we, are we going to see from you? Let's make, let's make us some spoiler. Yeah, yeah, you know, so like we talked about, I got the motherfucking valuable perspective show where I'm gonna be interviewing people from all over, cryptocurrency, the blockchain, crypto gaming. Uh, I have a bunch of entrepreneur friends a bunch of investor friends, uh, people in real estate. So my goal for that is to give y'all 
powerful content that can help your lives, right? There, there's so many things that we could do to make money. You know, as I get older, as I learn more about, you know, what business is and entrepreneurship, you know, I see that the world is your oyster, right? There's so many ways for all of us to create wealth. It's about how do we do it in a way that makes sense for us, right? Like, so I love to create art, you know, I love music. Um, I'm a content creator. So I've been creating these companies that essentially align with my interests and what I like to call my zone of genius, right? Because what I've learned is like, I like to go with the flow. You know, if y'all look at me, I'm a light skinned black dude, a black Native American and Jewish. So it's like, unfortunately, I can't walk into every situation and get the benefit of the doubt. You know, I actually have to try a little bit harder, right? I got my black earrings. So it's like, when people come and I'm, I'm coming and I'm like, oh, you know, I'm an entrepreneur, you know, I'm, I'm a CEO. Some people might look at me sideways, not everybody, but some people might look at me sideways, right? If I show up to a, a, an event and I'm like, I'm the DJ, people are like, yeah, you look like the DJ, right? So, so what I've learned in my life is like, there's certain things that I can do that is going with the flow and certain things I can do that's kind of going against the flow. And that's not to say that I, I shouldn't be an entrepreneur, I shouldn't be a CEO, but it's to say that there's gonna be a little bit more resistance to the idea of me being a CEO, right? And, and that might be true for like a woman, that might be true for anybody, right? Like a white dude might say, hey, I wanna be a hip hop artist. And some people might look at him side eye, right? So it's like, there's all these things that we do and based on how our avatar looks, the world either kind of accepts it or doesn't accept it. So I've been really like, you know, focused on like, what is my zone of genius? You know, what does the world see me as and how can I make that flow? You know, so being an artist, being a DJ, also investing in crypto, investing in blockchain, because I think it's, it's really, it makes sense to people because I'm a regular looking dude, right? Like I'm someone who's like, I'm just like y'all, man. I, I'm, I'm a hustler, you know, I went to um, just regular school. I didn't go to private school, but I always paid a lot of attention. You know, I always did well in, in certain subjects. And so I feel like, yo, if I could do it, if I can make money in crypto, then y'all can make money in crypto. You know, I'm not some Harvard grad. I'm a regular dude that, that likes math, that likes statistics, that likes making money. And so for me, it's about expressing and connecting with people who might not see themselves as investors. I know when I first got into crypto, I was like, man, why should I invest in crypto? Like I'm already late. Bitcoin is already $30,000. I'm not a technical dude, so I'm gonna lose my money. That's what I was thinking in my head. And it was through NFTs, it was through my art that got me into crypto that allowed me to say, you know what? I can do this. Like I can learn this. I can watch YouTube videos, right? I could sit there and listen to Vitalik Buterin talk about what Ethereum is. Like, I can do that and I wanna do that and I want y'all to do that too. So that's what the MVP show is all about is just breaking down these concepts that might be a little bit hard at first, but they're really easy, right? So I have that, I have a company called Cabana. So y'all could check out cabanawaves.co and my business partner, Douglas Emerson, he's a super talented content creator. He just sold his first feature documentary to a huge uh, documentary company who uh, basically bought the Beatles documentary. They did the Jimi Hendrix documentary. And so that was a, a huge step for him. And we're working on some content right now. We're actually working on a crypto documentary um, that's kind of going into the insides of like, you know, some of the, the aspects of culture in crypto and, and really telling like, what is this entity of crypto, right? And, and we're really looking forward to dropping that for the world. Um, so you guys can check that out. And for me, it's about expanding my network. I'm also creating a fund um, in the crypto space, in the blockchain and gaming space. And that's for people to be able to understand like they should have some piece of this in their portfolio, right? And so, I don't think the average person is gonna be as, as interested in NFTs, as interested in gaming and all that stuff as me. Um, so I have some partners that are in, in the investment world, in the fund world, 
and they're really interested in bringing this side of things to some of their investors so they can have a piece of their portfolio in this very high growth uh, uh, industry of blockchain and crypto. Man, a lot of projects. And I love the fact that you learned a lot uh, and like you earned what, what, what you can with your expertise and with your learning and you that you in now you, you just started and you already want to give it give it back and this is why you are creating also the this podcast this this documentary this fund and talking about the fund because i'm really interested in this how do you create a fund in the crypto space oh, i don't know if you want to because i don't know if you want to use like smart contracts and create a fund on the blockchain <laughs> or you want to create a fund like in the classic way so uh, to, uh, so go going through like politics and bureaucracy of the traditional world yeah it's a really good question so The way, the way we're planning it is to go the traditional route first, right? I have a traditional fund manager who I'm partnered with and she manages millions of dollars. Um, so to be able to go down that route where she has access to you know, people with capital and I have other people on our team who have access to a lot of people with capital. So we're going down that route. I believe you know, it's, it's created as an LLC. We'll have limited partners. We'll have our general partners managing the fund. So that first one will, will be traditional. I do see us in the future you know, creating smart contracts where people can invest in the fund just by sending in their Ethereum, right? And it's on the blockchain, you know exactly how much of the fund you have allocated to you based on how much you invested. Um, and maybe even you know, there's, a, there's a currency that you get based on that fund, right? It's like 100% of this token is allocation for this fund. And we split up the token based on who allocates what to the fund. Um, so yeah, you know, I, I'm really excited to kind of look at what that looks like in the future. I think right now, There's uh, legal limitations that we have to be really careful and mindful of. Um, but as we figure out the framework of how we can legally do it and, and be within the, the guidelines of the SEC and the Howey test and, and all that stuff, um, then we definitely, I want to move into the more blockchain version of the fund. Great, great. So you say that it's challenging anyway, like to open a fund today both in traditional and both in virtual world but it's better to open like in a tradi tra traditional way because if you're going to create something in the in the on the blockchain and you still don't know how really the blockchain is going to work in the next year it can be like dangerous it can put you like in a bad situation so better to do like yeah. in the traditional way and then it's easier to transfer it and of course Here also, it's a question of target because if you go on the blockchain, you are going to open like your doors to a, a new bunch of people, especially like I think Gen Z and millennials that I'm quite sure that are the people that most, in, most invest in cryptos. While maybe with a traditional fund, you are, you are, you are like allowing people, millennials and other generations that are older to invest in your fund but like it seems like that yeah do you it's do you like have got a a, a specific of objective of like empowering and educating like people from all the ages or you just prefer to go maybe all in on millennials and gen z gen z and gen a that is the one that will be like crypto millionaires maybe in five years in 10 years when they are going to start investing at 15 in the next cryptocurrency what's like your educational objective on this Yeah, no, I love that. So, so the MVP show is really the marketing aspect of this show, right? So the way I see us doing a lot of the market, market research and, and analysis is through us interviewing some of the top entrepreneurs, top creatives, uh, top NFT artists in the whole space, right? Some of the game creators, because what we want to do is understand like what projects are worthy of investment, right? And when it comes to who I want to invest in this fund, You know, I want people who, number one, who look like me, you know, black and brown people, but anybody who identifies with my energy of like hip hop, you know, youthful spirit. So definitely millennials, def definitely Gen Z. And I foresee a world where maybe even part of our cap table is filled with people who invest via crypto, right? So maybe we have, 
you know, part of the fund where if you, you put some of your Ethereum up and then that gets locked and then the people who do that, they get put onto the cap table as maybe like one board seat, right? So I think there's some really innovative ways. And I know the Obama administration, he, uh, he had some new laws that were, that were put in so that you can uh, kind of do some fundraising on a little bit more of a, a mass scale. And, you know, there's some limitations, there's some real legal limitations that really piss me off, to be honest. I think that to be an accredited investor it is kind of bullshit in this country, right? In order to invest in a lot of these startups and really uh, these, these growth funds, you have to be an accredited investor, meaning you have to have, I believe it's like a million dollars of, uh, of capital that you're able to invest and so that that really leaves off leaves out a lot of people, right? That leaves out me. That leaves out a lot of uh, millennials and Gen Zs, and and especially uh, people in the Black and Brown communities, right? We don't historically come from having a lot of wealth because of the historical aspects of slavery. And the same thing is true for women, right? Women weren't able to start their own businesses and and hold property till like the '60s and '70s. So a lot of us have been left out of being able to really build generational wealth. And I think that, you know, in America, it's bullshit that I can go to a casino. I can go to a casino right now and drop $100,000. No, and that's not illegal. Nobody's going to have a problem. But if I drop $100,000 on a company that's illegal, that doesn't make sense. And, and the government claims that they're doing that to protect me. Then why aren't they protecting me from losing and gambling, right? It's like, we can't have both in the same country. It does not make sense. So, you know, anybody listening to this, I want all of us to start banding together because this is a really big political issue. You know, look up the Howey test and look up, you know, what it means to be an accredited investor and why regular people are being limited in some of these great opportunities, right? Give us the benefit of the doubt that says that we know what we're doing. If you're giving me the benefit of the doubt to let me go into the casino, give me that same benefit of the doubt to invest in projects that have a, a chance of being successful, you know? Absolutely. And I think that one of the main problems, not just of the US, but I come from Italy and I, I've seen this problem around the world, it's the lack of financial education. And this is yep. why like, it's not so regulated it's not because like people like really don't understand the dynamics of finance i think that like for for example like 50% of people in us invest and the other 50% of people don't invest that means right. for me that like half of the population doesn't know how money works because if you just know how money works you invest because not investing is a choice of investment itself because there is there is inflation so you're going to lose your money and you you decide to not invest and you think that okay no i'm just going to save but saving it's not safe anymore i think it's never been like so safe i don't know historically from when but like right. it's important for this and of course it, and, and i see cryptos as a huge opportunity for anyone especially from gen z uh, so younger generation to start educating themselves and make them ask for the first time in their life basic question like how money works how my parents pay taxes how i'm going to rent like um now so when i when i'll be older that these are questions that you never can ever imagine in school it seems like surreality but nothing is more real than the bills that you have to pay at the end of, of your mom so that's so important and i'm very glad to see people like Gary Vaynerchuk, Gary V that for that he's he's got a huge community of millions and millions of, of young people and he is educating now because he's just dropped his NFTs and of course not just Gary V. I'm talking about Gary V because I bought his NFT. It was the first hey. NFT that I bought in my life. And uh, yeah. Congrats, because, man. <laughs> because of course there is a layer of, of utility but like he educated me through my career since 20, 2017 and now in few days like he switched all he switched his profile in like a financial education 
profile of course not just this but he's going for the moment in these days because he's just alone to be friends like all in on this and that's so important because i was in the, on the discord that he created and a lot of people say i never know anything about cryptos about finance i never asked me, me this question but thanks to you like i i spent like 100 hours in the next in the next in the last week and i educated myself and this is exactly how much time you need to start yeah. having this perception <laughs> 100 hours of youtube is everything yeah. you need to learn and to like have this i don't know how to say like fire in your head that makes you think about okay maybe i'm missing something very important for my life and for my future yes and like yes. why why in so many years of my life no one has ever at least this is my personal experience no why no one has ever ever told me about this how important this can be how like because you were you live in a rich place you live in venice and uh, rich people know how to invest because there isn't like a, a wage that can give you millions or billions or dollars you just you you arrive to build your wealth at this incredible value for two reasons or you build a huge product that is very valuable for the world for example you are you are jeff bezos or you are a great investor and you know how to move your money and that's not just about money. That's amazing in the fact that you can invest in what you believe will be the future of this world. Sustainability, yep. AI, what you want. And that's mm -hmm. a tool, an amazing tool that makes you feel inside this world. Because if you build your wealth and people, thanks to the fact that you invest some of your wealth, they become more empowered because you invested in their startup, you invest in their project. And that's amazing. That's, that's the community. That's the connection. And everything yeah. for me now is empowered thanks to cryptocurrency and NFTs. So Same if you, here. Yeah. And I want to throw out, so there's three ways to build wealth, right? For everyone listening, you can get wealthy by your parents or someone giving you money, right? So if that's not you, then you got to move to these other two ways, right? So the other two ways is you can invest in a piece of a company that becomes valuable, right? So if you have ownership in a piece of a company or a piece of, let's say, a crypto technology, if you own part of that, you can get wealthy or you can start a company which you have ownership of that is successful, right? Those are really like the two ways that you could you can build wealth is own a piece of a company, you know, and sell products or services or invest, right? So I want everybody to think about, you know, which one of those two ways do you want to go? Maybe you go into both, right? And, and how are you going to build wealth? Because wealth building is so important because it helps us to, like you said, it helps us to create the world we want to see. You know, when you're investing in projects, you're changing the way that the world looks and you're betting on the world looking in a way that you want it to look right and so you want to bet with your dollars you know if you want if you want there to be more green energy maybe you buy a tesla right you're you're basically betting on you know not having fossil fuels to run your vehicles right so there's all these different things that it's not just about owning a piece of a company but it's also about creating the world that you want to see it it has it has a very uh spiritual aspect to it as well I totally agree and like because we are talking about investing and like what's the future of this world what would you like to invest in in the next years and i'm i'm writing it now huge this is not financial advice for this channel but it's just in information with information purposes but like is there something in particular that you are seeing you're watching like not 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 talking about companies but talking about maybe industries and geographies so more in the macro which are the macro trends that you think are going to increase in the next 10 years 20 years yeah so number one i would say blockchain gaming i believe that blockchain gaming is going to explode in a way that we are not ready for the world has not seen what's getting ready to happen right you have 
what, seven, eight billion people in the world. So how many of us played video games growing up, right? And then what happened to me is I had to quit playing video games because it was, I was literally skipping college, right? I was skipping school to play video games, to play Madden. And I said, I can't do this. You know, I, I have to like be productive. So I, I literally had to quit. But now people are going to be able to start playing video games and earning a living, earning thousands and potentially hundreds and millions of dollars, right? So I believe that you got uh, Riot Games. They just went really deep into blockchain gaming. Look up Gala Games. You know, I operate a couple of nodes in Gala. So I'm really long on Gala Games and what they're building with Mirandis. Um, you could look at Star Atlas. That's huge. Axie Infinity. Um, I just believe that, you know, what Dapper Labs is doing just with some of their use case NFTs and the me bits. Um, you know, we're at the very beginning. I even believe that crypto voxels and Decentraland, a lot of yeah. that is um, a, a portal for gaming in, yeah. in many ways, right? So you can go in and, and play to earn. But um, it's hard for me to see yeah. something that's going to be bigger than that. Because yeah. if, you, <laughs> if you look at like Fortnite, right, and how big Fortnite has gotten, and then you look at how Fortnite mixed the, the Travis Scott, uh, you know, they did the concert together. So you have this mixture of content, video games, music. I mean, we're just at the very, very beginning of it. And yeah. in the skins industry, right? Like skins on Fortnite, it's a multi-billion dollar industry. And a lot of that is actually, uh, it, it's underground, right? People are selling skins to each other and, and Fortnite isn't even getting paid off of that. So I think that once the industry starts to catch up with where people want to be and and digital ownership, digital assets like NFTs within games, I think it's just going to explode. So that, and then yeah. you know, obviously the blo the blockchain underneath that that's going to be supporting it. And I've got my opinion also on why like gaming is exploding so much because I don't know you, but for me it seems like that my life is becoming a fucking video game. I don't know, man. With exactly. all these NFTs, cryptocurrency, virtual world, it seems like a video game. So this is why people are going to enjoy playing but not video games enjoy playing with their life because when you habilitate yourself to manage all these assets all this tool all this deal, easy communication it's it, it's not like elon musk sometimes said like we live in a simulation and like he makes me it makes me really cry when, when he says something like that but <laughs> really I, yeah i want to say so i, yeah. I think So I completely agree. I think we're living in the in the video game era, right? Like I'm like, we're leaving the information era and we're moving into like the video game era where I even look at crypto like a game, right? So crypto, if you look at it, it's turning everybody into stockbrokers, right? Everybody's trading stocks and it's like, it, it gamifies it. If you even look at the logos, they look like these little like yeah, game logos. I love them, like patches. Yeah, you know, and if I don't know if you've done like pancake swap, so they're gamifying yeah, yeah, no, no. liquidity providing, right? You could be a liquidity provider and it, it's fun. It, it's like, oh, I'm, I'm making money. You're clicking things and it, it's turning it all. It's turning our whole life into a real game. And then so because we're living in the video game era, that also means that there's cheat codes, right? Remember the cheat codes in games. So this podcast, this is a cheat code for anybody watching this, right? Gary V, he's giving out cheat codes, right? Motherfucking valuable perspectives, all these cheat codes, right? YouTube, you go onto YouTube and you can learn something that also is going to make you $100,000, right? You might invest in an, in an early coin because you saw YouTube, uh, YouTuber talking about it, right? So we're living in this video game era, which means we're also living in the cheat code era where you can learn things about your health, right? About your mental health, about your wellness. And you can, at a snap of a finger, I like to call it quantum change. You can make quantum change with these cheat codes. And so just know that the way the world is, is not the way it was just 10 years ago. There's quantum change that can happen with your life, with your health and with your, your investment in your money. Amen. That's really smart from you. Absolutely. Yeah. We are in the video game here. I totally agree. And like, I, 
I, I worked also, uh, let's, let's jump for a second in the education, like education, school is the base of every society. I worked in the education industry last year in Italy. I worked with the government too. And uh, I thought about, and I, I quit my job because no one wanted like to listen to me that I was saying the only way to change school is to gamify it. It's to gamify yep. the experience, make it, make it fun, yep. fun. game-based yep. learning. It's the future of yep. education. And if you don't game, if you don't gamify their experience of learning, you, you, you when I learn on YouTube, I don't even think I'm learning. I'm like I'm, I'm, I, it's, it can be like 3 a.m. on my bed. I can like stay with my phone there. It seems like a game, but I'm learning because I'm seeing a YouTube channel with millions of subscribers that he's got, he's here because he's, he's created so much value for the audiences and that audience is becoming to become wealthier because he's got information, because he, he's got a, a, a fun way like of taking them. So absolutely. And um, talking about video game industry, I wanted to say to share with you some numbers. First of all, video game industry now is huge, way more bigger than like music and, and, and film industry combined because music industry has got like 25 billion it's an industry of 25 billions uh, same film industry is an industry of 55 or 50 billion around 50 billion but video game industry it's 200 billion like Jeez. It's, we're just getting started and we're too. just getting started like you see like this this graphic that it's increasing increasing a lot and like as you mentioned before talking turn in coming back in NFTs, like the markets of, for example, Fortnite and just markets of skins and of, of collectibles inside the video game industry is about the half of the money inside this inside mm -hmm. the industry. Like like on 200 billions, like 100 billions is just about these markets of skins around this. And these are not are these are not nfts in the sense they, they, this there's this always been nfts but they still haven't pulled out from this market in the sense that people that are buying them they don't own it so imagine what is going to happen when like half of the gaming of the value of the gaming market will be in the hand of the people that have played and they've got they've created this industry yeah it's it's, I think personally, I think it's hard to even wrap our head around how it's going to impact the world. So I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Ready Player One, yeah, yeah. right? But, but I do think that that movie creates a lot of predictions that are very smart. You know, it's a movie, but I do think that is where we're headed, where it's like, if you can make a living playing a video game a lot of people are going to do that. <laughs> like, let's just be honest, because how many jobs out there suck ass? Like, a lot of jobs suck. And so if you could tell someone, like, you know, I made, I made maybe around $5,000 in the last month racing digital horses, right? So, I mean, you can compare that to a lot of people who are, aren't making $5,000 a month working their ass off, right? And that, that's not to say that the, that money is going to continue forever. I don't know. Maybe it's going to go up, right? Maybe that 5,000 turns to 10,000. All I know is last month, that's what I made, right? And so I think we're at the very beginning of the potential of all this. And I think Zed Run, for those who want to look up the horses, Zed Run is a very much ahead of the curve because they're one of the first NFT projects that have really allowed the players to make money off of the system very quickly, right? You could buy the horses, trade the horses, but then you can race them. And so there's an ecosystem that monetizes the game almost instantly. And I think that for them, they're ahead of the curve because it's very simple, it's straightforward. Like buy horses and race it. We all, because of the real world, we all kind of get that concept already, right? So gaming, and like, you know, going deep into like role playing, it's a little bit more development, let's be honest. Like for a game developer, it's gonna take more than just having horses run straight. So I believe that they're very ahead of the curve just because of the, the ease of building out that game was a little bit easier. 
but it shows us what is getting ready to be unlocked across the whole industry. Totally, man. Like Spielberg with that with that film Ready Player One, like <laughs> he envisioned a lot. <laughs> Thanks to Spielberg, that has always been like he are bringing us all these ideas about the future. And now, yeah, now, know, right? now I can feel that we are moving into that. Absolutely. So, man, I think that we shared a lot today about the metaverse, about uh, the video game era, about financial education in the metaverse and in the crypto world. So I am very glad that you're going to continue also to educate your community with your podcast. And so let's see you next time at your podcast. Yeah, Francesco, man, I really appreciate you and everything you're doing for the NFT community, bro. Like I see you really diving in and you know, it's, it's awesome to see this community get built, right? Like, like I said, I'm a hip hop dude, right? So the hip hop community means a lot to me. And I'm also a crypto dude, you know, I'm, I'm a blockchain dude. So this community means a lot to me, right? It's like, we're brothers, like we're in like this decentralized game. It's, it's very real, right? Because I see myself as like a decentralized human, you know, being part of the hip hop community, We were never a part of the centralized community, right? We never got acceptance by mainstream. So we've been on the outside, right? We've, we've been fighting to, to kind of create our value without acceptance. And the same thing has been happening in crypto, right? People investing in Bitcoin and people are getting laughed at for years. And now it's getting mainstream acceptance, right? So I see this, this real um, kind of connection within hip hop and, and crypto and And I just want to thank you and your audience for, for all that you do and your audience for tuning in. I know y'all are the future leaders of this space, you know, and together we're going we're gonna to change the world. I know that sounds, you know, very idealistic, but the world is already changing and we're all a part of it. So I just want to thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for the work that you're doing. Thank you, bro, really, for sharing this. We are going to change the world and we are going to do it all together in this community. So thank you again for coming here today and see, see yes. you very soon, man. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. And I keep sending y'all that motherfucking valuable perspective.